Okay, let's look at what makes up a game. We have elements, we have mechanics, and we have dynamics. So under elements, we have the, basically the instruments we use to play the game. So like a bat and a ball. It doesn't make up the game, and there's certainly lots of different elements. Mechanics, though, are what give the elements meaning. So for instance, in the game of baseball, we have strikes and balls. We have teams, we have winners, losers, there's innings, uh, the scoreboard, uh, it goes up. We have errors. There's all sorts of mechanics that go into baseball to make it a game, including how long it goes, people in the stands, and so on. So basic mechanics, game mechanics, we think of the usual points, badges, leaderboards. We also have things like avatars, countdown clocks, Easter boards, lottery trading systems, and so on. Then we have dynamics, and this is where the mechanics come into play with people because people have different motivations, different reasons to play, uh, different characters, personalities, uh, structures, uh, points of life, status, and so on. So the mechanics will appeal differently to different types of people. Okay, let's now look at mechanics versus dynamics because this is where things get interesting. Because we can't just throw mechanics at something and expect certain results and certainly can't call it gamified because different mechanics interact differently with different motivators and create different dynamics. So for instance, let's use the good old points, badges, and leaderboards. And what we find is that with points, High savings people like points because they have something to collect. Expedient folks, people who are high expedient, might find ways to collect points, gain the system, kind of cheat and uh, build up points very, very quickly. If it's tough to get points, high power people will like them, but if points come too easily, they'll actually become demotivated. Points will actually push them away. Same is true for high status folks. If everyone gets a ribbon, they could care less. So if everybody collects points just for showing up, that doesn't motivate them. On the other side, high tranquility may like points because it demonstrates they're moving in the right direction. So if you get this, you get a point. If you get this, you get a point. So they have confidence that they're doing it correctly. On the other side though, high vengeance people will only like points if there are clear winners. And if, and if you have to fight to get those points, and they'll even like it more if there's some way to hinder other people to get points or if you can take away points from other folks. So points, there's quite a bit here with just points. Badges have similar problems. You might think, well, high status people would like badges because it demonstrates you've made an achievement. But again, if lots of people have badges, then it could demotivate them. Worse, if low status people get it or normal people get uh, the badges, then that will actually turn off high status folks. On the opposite side, high acceptance people will become offended if certain people get badges uh, and, and if they demonstrate status. So it could actually turn off and or offend high acceptance people. Of course, high vengeance people only like badges if they can take yours away from you. And interdependent people will want badges for the whole group or the team. They'll be embarrassed if they get a badge, but other people don't. So if it's individual badges, that could actually push them away as well. Leaderboards work well for high power people and vengeance people because we have clear winners. You can work towards something. Uh, on the vengeance side, you're actually pushing people down. But on the other side, if, if they're not, so let's say, in the top five or top ten, they may give up quickly and check out of the process. High status people will only be attracted to leaderboards if it means uh, something and everybody is aware that they've achieved a certain status on the leaderboard. Leaderboards are extremely stressful for high acceptance people because they're very aware when they're not measuring up. They're afraid of being criticized and letting people down. Interdependent people will, will be turned off by leaderboards that praise individuals. And even if teams are winning on the leaderboard, if the teams are all within inside of an organization, that will make them uncomfortable because we should all be working together instead of against each other. Now, 
What's important here when we're looking at points, badges, and leaderboards is also to realize that these three mechanics have very little effect on other types of motivators. For instance, beauty, there's, unless the badge is extremely attractive. Uh, curiosity, there's nothing here to really appeal to the curious folks. Uh, idealism order unless the points are given out in a very orderly manner but they probably uh, don't really appeal to people who are high order or low order for that matter physical activity there's uh, very little interest for them and of course social contact uh, don't uh, these don't really apply to them so the point is this inside of mechanics and dynamics mechanics appeal in certain ways to certain motivators and but they also have the potential to push away other motivators and sometimes people just will not be attracted to a mechanic because it's not part of their motivational profile